Hey y'all, welcome and welcome back to another episode of Solar Vision. Yay! We are on episode seven. Now that's wild. Seven? Sorry, let me check the the volume. Maybe I don't want it up that high. Um, how are y'all doing? How has this week been for y'all? How do you expect next week to go? Are y'all ready for the weekend? Because it should be Thursday when this is posted. How are y'all feeling? Comment down below. Um, and if you can't comment, find me on YouTube. <laughs> this week I'm doing good. Um, I noticed some really good things with the podcast and my Instagram for the podcast and how it's just been going a little crazy. Um, not viral, obviously, which I don't expect or want to happen. But just to grow gradually and slowly is what I really like. Um, noticing different things about like podcasts versus like, you know, what I post on YouTube, depending on what you're listening from. Um, this is also available in video version if you're watching. I mean, listening. Wow. <laughs> this is available in video version if you're listening via Spotify, Google, Apple Podcasts, all those things. Um, but the ratings via audio only versus the ratings for the video and audio are totally different um but yeah i'm just testing out you know the schedules and all that stuff which is not fun stuff to be talking about but scheduling figuring out you know where how things should be going finding my groove basically especially in like how i want to you know come across and address certain topics and it all will come eventually but that's just I guess a moment of transparency trying to stay consistent and still trying to find a groove in a lane that I know a lot about but to maneuver through is a different story so yeah it goes to show that or my message to you would be just because you found something that you want to do, something that you like, something that you love, doesn't mean that one, everything will fall into place, and two, doesn't mean that it's going to, the ins and outs will be an instant thing that you understand, you get, and you know, because there's just a lot of trial and error, and just stay consistent and it will happen. Take that for anywhere or anything in your life. All right, so let's start off with our affirmations. And these are not my original affirmations. I kind of ran out. Um, I have other affirmations, but it's specific for like money. And what other affirmations did I have? Money, jobs, business. Yeah, that's it. Um, if y'all want to hear specific ones, let me know. But I just didn't feel, you know, like, who's to say people want to hear money affirmations. But if you do, let me know. All right. Where is the tab I was just in? So we can get this podcast started. All right. Affirmations. Are you ready? If you're new here, we say affirmations. I do a little pause right after so you can say them with me and... I don't know. I just feel like, you know, you feel better when you speak nicely and kind and great. You speak of great things about yourself. I just feel like that is just, I don't know, it's very uplifting. And I don't know. At least if you don't do affirmations, at least you'll do it once a week with me. I don't really do aff say affirmations every single day, but here I am once a week with y'all and if you're not new here hey let's do our affirmations <laughs> um i am a powerhouse i build its foundation and choose its contents pause i normally do the affirmations that are mine but I've been running out. This is episode seven. I do about 10 to 12 every episode. There's only so many affirmations that I wrote down and had stored. So I got this online from like random places, things that stuck out to me. Um, and I'll link them below. All right. I am a powerhouse. I build its foundation and choose its contents. 
you are a powerhouse. You build your foundation and you choose what you allow within your powerhouse. I am indestructible. I am the architect of my life. Architect of that powerhouse. I have been given endless talents which I begin to utilize. Utilize those talents. My body is healthy. That's a blessing. I forgive those who have harmed me in my past and peacefully detach from them. My nature is divine. Ooh, divine. I radiate beauty, charm, and grace. My mind is brilliant. Yeah, your mind is brilliant. I am superior to negative thoughts and low actions. Mm, these just put me in like a zen mode. Like, those were good to hear. Those are really good. Those are really good. I hope that those affirmations did for you what they were supposed to do and gave you what they were supposed to give you because I think you're here for a reason and thank you for being here and I appreciate it. <laughs> okay, so let's get into the topic. The topic for this week is you can't expect the same people that hurt you to all of a sudden want to do right by you. I'm going to say it again. You can't expect the same people that hurt you. You can't accept the same. You can't expect the people that hurt you to all of a sudden want to do right by you. And I think that though it sounds when I say it, it I don't know, to me, it sounds like, oh, that's obvious. But I think that we have been in so many situations where we expect people that have hurt us once, twice, third, three, once, twice, thrice. I don't know. We expect people that have hurt us in the past to all of a sudden prove to us that they can do right by us. Like, you stay around, you stick around because you think that they can do right by you. You think that they can right their wrongs. Maybe it's because they tell you that they can, but I want you to know that you don't deserve that. Those people showed you exactly how they felt about you in the moment that they hurt you, right? Now, I'm not saying as soon as someone's hurt you, someone hurts you, you don't have you just cut ties no that's not what i'm saying what i'm saying is if you keep allowing yourself to get hurt by this person if you keep putting yourself in situations where they are able to hurt you you keep trusting them over and over after hurting you deeply there's no way you you cannot expect for them to want to do right by you they have already disrespected you in so many ways. They already showed you how much they don't really care about how your feelings, how their actions affect you. You cannot expect them to be able to do right by you all of a sudden. In some cases, we get wrapped up in this because whoever this person is, they are a good talker, they're charming, whatever it may be. They are able to talk their way into being given another chance. When in reality, the actions speak louder than words. Don't let them words fool you because people will say anything to be back on your good side. They'll say they'll do anything. They'll, yeah, just like how everybody be praying to God, saying they'll never do something again if they get them out the situation. But then once they're out the situation, they go right back. Yeah, it's the words. And obviously, and honestly, if you allow people to use words to get on your good side, most of the time, nine times out of ten, they're not going to respect you because they know they can say this, that, and the other, and that'll get you to come back. 
They're not going to respect you because you're not making them show you via actions. They're just able to say words. The people or the person that hurt you clearly are the way they are. If you're the type of person that can clearly hurt people and not think twice about it, that is just how they are. Okay? Believe them when they showed you exactly how they are. That is another topic as well. But believe them the first time. That way you save yourself so much heartache. You save so much heartache if you believe how they showed you who they were in the beginning. Because if they were bold enough to show you in the beginning, it's a tester to see how you receive it and how long you can receive it. And people will hurt you until you can't take it no more. They'll just keep going. These kind of people, I'm not going to say they don't have no heart, but they kind of don't got no heart. And it's not okay. It's not okay. But it's up to us, people on the receiving end, to realize, like, okay, one, they show me their true colors, and that don't match with, you know, what's going on in my coloring book, so I need to take my coloring book and bounce. Right? That's on, That's in the beginning. Now, if you're here, you have to realize that some people just might not be the people that you expect them to be. You might be with someone. And when I say this, once again, I say this every episode, all relationships across all boards. All right. When you are with someone, you have certain expectations on based on what you want in your life. Right. Not necessarily how they are. But if you have this person and they're doing you wrong, but you have expectations and it ties into the want and need to try to change people, to see potential in them and try to groom them or make them the person you want them to be. But that ends up going bad because they're not that person. That's just not them and you can't change them into the person you want them to be. You're better off being alone, separating yourself and look for someone that has that already or something similar but not hurting you but even like if you are in a situation where someone hurts you deeply and you're looking for a sorry you're looking for them to show remorse you're looking for closure which in the next episode we explain why you sorry mike why you don't always need closure but if you are in that situation you're looking for them to feel bad That's where you have it messed up because they committed acts. They did certain things that showed you that they don't care. They did certain things that showed you that the level of respect that they have for you. They did things that hurt you. You cannot expect that person to really feel bad. And depending on the kind of person, that might not even just go well at all. But you cannot expect for a person that has caused you so much pain, turmoil, and a hard existence to then be sorry for it if you allowed it to happen. They're not going to be sorry. That's part of their character. Any kind of person that does that without feeling bad and can do it over and over again, what do you expect? What do you expect? I don't think it's... It's not fair to you to put up with that. People that hurt you are showing their character. They're showing exactly who they are. Stop putting your care into the people that hurt you. Stop putting your faith and your trust into the people that hurt you. Because what are they going to do with it? Exactly what they did before. Destroy it. Wait till you build it back up. You give it to them again, and they're going to destroy it. You deserve more than that. You deserve to give your trust to someone that is going to hold your trust and make your trust stronger. But please don't and stop expecting for the people that hurt you to, one, not hurt you again. Now, this is depending. We're going to say depending. I'm not talking about someone that hurt you and they apologize and, you know, they show remorse and they say they're never going to do it again. And they show you that they're not going to ever do it again. I'm talking about the people 
like constantly hurt people, constantly cheat, constantly spread rumors, constantly lie to you, things like that. Those are the people I'm talking about. So don't ever get it confused. Okay. Stop putting your trust in those people because they show that they don't deserve your trust. You're so, you're so caught up in so many things. You're caught up in their words that you are convinced to keep giving them your trust over and over again. Until it's just like a revolving door and you just get used to it. I'm going to give some examples. It's just like if you go to a restaurant and every single time you go to this restaurant, you get food poisoning or they and or they treat you horribly. Would you keep going over and over again? Would you trust your body and your health to keep going and your mental health if they're doing you wrong? But let's just say you get sick every single time you go to one specific restaurant. Will you keep going after the second time? Because after the second time, that's when you realize like, oh, this place is making me sick. It's this place. It's not the food I had the day before both times. It's this, it's this place. Would you keep going back to that place? You wouldn't. So with these same people that are destroying your trust and giving you heartbreak and causing you so much pain, you should not keep trusting them with the great values that you have. It's just like in any other sense. You wouldn't do that. If you go to a place and they always have bad customer service, that makes you not want to go there no more. When you have negative experiences over and over again, you should not want to keep experiencing those bad experiences. So therefore, you eliminate that thing that is causing you a bad experience. So if you have people in your life that are constantly causing you pain, it could be, like I said, cheating. It could be uh, spreading rumors, spreading lies, belittling you, like making you feel bad about yourself. Um, harming like physical abuse any kind of abuse anything that doesn't make you feel good on the inside get rid of them eliminate them because what do you really have to lose if you are around someone that makes you feel like that only thing you're losing is your sense of peace and happiness because they hurt you all the time so get out that situation. If we go back to the example of customer service, you can't expect that manager, employee, or whoever's always there, if there's always bad customer service, you can't expect them to all of a sudden have great customer service. You can't keep going to that same department store or wherever, department store or wherever you're having bad customer service and expect to have good customer service when they showed you before, twice, maybe three times over, that they don't provide that. That's just not very important to them. So to these people that are hurting you, your feelings aren't that important to them. They have showed you that more than once, more than twice, however many times it happened to you. You can't expect for the next time you forgive them that your feelings will all of a sudden be, be important to them. Why would they? Why would they change? For you? When they did all this before? That's just how they are. Leave those people exactly where they are, how they are. It's not your job to fix them. It's not your job to see the good in them and give them encouragement because you are the one receiving all the pain. They're fine. Their, their feelings aren't being hurt. They are the one hurting. They're probably hurting inside for sure. But in this situation with the interaction between you and that person, they are fine. They're not being hurt. They're not affected by the pain that they're causing you. So why? Why would we put ourselves through that? You cannot expect for those people to all of a sudden want to do right by you. Now, if you have family members that constantly belittled you or made you feel like you know you weren't worth anything talked down on you never believed you caused you to have negative characteristics whatever it may be 
you cannot all of a sudden expect to go to them, tell them how they affected you, and for them to want to do right by you. You cannot expect for them to accept what they did to you and or to be able to come to you in a way that is welcoming or nice or in a way that you probably would expect if you were really hurting from their actions, right? Because they already showed you how they feel about your feelings. And it sounds very harsh. It sounds, it sounds harsh and it's unfortunate, but that is really what it is. You can't expect for when you come to them and you tell them about themselves, for them to be open and willing because now they're seeing it as a threat, right? But at the same time, they never cared about your feelings anyway, so why would they care now? I'm saying this to say, I'm not judging you for what you've been through and or if you are in a situation like this. But I'm here to help you realize certain things and to help you get out of certain things so that you can live your best life. Okay? So if you've ever been in any kind of relationship and they have been hurting you, hurting you hurting you and they use their words and maybe baby actions temporary actions to keep you right and then in certain circumstances they make you feel bad for addressing certain things right you need to get out of there you have to get out of there well one it's not okay to accept just words and half-ass actions for your love right and i'm gonna say twice of real heartbreak that's enough because if you saw how it affected me or whatever it is affected me the first two times and you decide to go again that means you really don't care that means you really don't care and that is worse than the actions but i just want you to see that you got to let go of that dream happily ever after whatever it is that is keeping you focus and in this relationship you got to let it go because they're not going to be able to do right by you they'll probably be able to do right by someone else when they realize that you're not taking up for any of the stuff that they were putting you through but while y'all are going through it they're not going to do right by you it's going to take something big like you leaving something big like you separating something big like you pushing them to the side to realize like oh i lost this let them realize what they lost by losing you and by not caring about your feelings and not caring about how you felt or making your feelings important to them. If you ever want someone to try to do right by you, that's the best way, but not by staying with them and not by putting your trust in them over and over time and time again, because there, there's no consequences. You got to give consequences to people's actions. That way they learn. Just like how you do with kids, just like how you do with teenagers. If they do something wrong, there's consequences. Even in life, adults, you do something wrong, you commit a crime, you go to jail. While in jail, you think about it, right? In jail, you're separated from society. So someone does you wrong, someone hurts you, separate them from you. Let them think about what they, they had going on, right? I'm not saying that you can't get back with someone or be friends with someone again, but you can't just say, okay, I'm okay. Here's my trust again. Here's my trust again. Here's my trust again. If trust was money, you'd be broke because you give your trust to this person over and over again and they're just using it to buy whatever for somebody else. Not okay. If this situation is something that you're probably going through, if you're listening to this, if you're watching this, separate yourself from them. Make them realize what they're missing. Because for whatever reason, they see you as like a rag doll that can take whatever. And they'll st you'll still be down, which that's not okay. You don't deserve that, right? So give consequences to every action. Make it hard for them to gain your trust again. Make it hard for them to gain your trust again. You can't make that trust come back easily. Because deep down, deep down, even though you gave them your trust, you still don't trust them. Trust takes a long time to build back up. A long time. So stop giving yourself to people that you don't trust. You're giving out 
trust is not there. So these people are on a trust credit. Over, they're in, they're on a trust credit and they're in trust debt. And you keep maxing out your trust card for them. Why? Why? It's not worth it. It's not worth it. So in between there, you can hear and or see. Maybe I just hear it. Don't be letting nobody just run over you. I don't care who they are. Don't let nobody run over you. Don't let nobody treat you any kind of way. Because people do what you allow. And I know we've all heard that they really do what you allow. If the first two times they hurt you, you gave them consequences, they realize like, oh, snap, I can't keep doing this. Because I'm going to lose this person. And if they decide that they're okay with losing you, that's fine too. Because that really shows that they don't care. Don't be so hung up on trying to be attached to someone that you neglect yourself. And you neglect your level of stability, trust, and mental. Because it's not worth it, once again. None of it's worth it. They're never going to do right by you. Never. It's just like these relationships. Like, you see people in relationships... And they're just all over the place. You cheat, he cheat, he cheat, she cheat, she whatever. You got friends that are enemies one day and they're besties the next day, enemies, besties. And it's just like, why do y'all put yourselves through that? It's not worth it. It's too much, it's too much stress. Too much stress in my left breast. That's just too much stress. You are not the problem, you're not crazy. There's nothing wrong with you. Like, you see them for who they are. You bring it up. And they make you feel like, nah, you're crazy. Like, something's going on with you. And in in a way to not seem crazy, you decide, like, okay, well, maybe I should chill out. When the whole time it's them. Please separate. Give a consequence. But in the back of your head, just know. This person will not do right by me. I'm not sticking around any longer because I know they're not going to do right by me. I deserve to be in a relationship where I'm being treated properly and fairly. Because what's the point of being in a relationship? You kind of stay away from people that hurt you. People that you don't like. You stay away from them. What's the difference? All right. So we're going to jump into our Reddit. I don't know what they call this, but... (sighs) Let loose. Let's call it let loose. Yeah. All right. We got an official name on air. We're going to call this segment let loose. This is where we go into like our Reddit uh, topics or like fun facts or just like funny topics that I find while I'm scrolling through Instagram and I save it. All right. So we're probably going to do three today because my husband gave me a fun fact or a shower thought, sorry. My husband gave me a shower thought that is like, phew. all right, you ready? You ready? You ready? He got it from Reddit as well. Sex is the leading cause of people. <laughs> that was so funny to me. Sex is the leading cause of people. And it's because it's so true. It's really true. It's really true. I like that one. I bust out laughing when he told me. I hope he burst out laughing too. All right. All righty, Diana. The groom invited his female friend. She was in the early stages of pregnancy. Towards the end of the night, the bride asked aforementioned friend who the father was. The friend cheerfully said, the groom's name. I bet that marriage ended quickly. For sure. My uncle red faced and screaming at 14 year old me on his wedding day to make sure I wear condoms so I don't have to marry some I knocked up. Oh my gosh. Wow. Edit. This was 30 years ago when having children out of wedlock still carried a stigma. I'm sure my grandfather told my uncle to do the right thing and marry her. My mother, who was older than my uncle, got kicked out of the house at 18 for being pregnant with me. And I'm sure that influenced my uncle's decision. 
that just, that makes sense. The groom didn't look at the bride once. <laughs> What's the point of agreeing to be here? Oh my gosh. Imagine you're at your own wedding and your future husband doesn't look at you once. Oh no. Heck no. Hecky no. What did they say, hecky no? What was he looking at? Like, why didn't he want to look at her? Like, yeah. I would pause that wedding and ask him what's up. Do you got beef? Because I would notice that. And I would say something like, nah, this is supposed to be the most special day of my life. And you out here not looking at me? I didn't put on this makeup, got my hair done, got this dress that I was stressing about. You know, exercising, dieting, trying to fit in it, blah, 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 whatever people do. And you're not going to look at me? Oh, we're fighting. Or fighting. Someone said, that's really sad. I'd be crushed. And then the poster said, it was strange. I'm a musician who used to play loads of weddings. Yeah, he said play loads of weddings. But this wedding took the cake. What made it worse was seeing the bride so happy. <laughs> so she was too happy to even realize that he wasn't even looking. Oh, my gosh. That's, I, my whole family's jumping in. Because you better look at me. All right, this is a long one. The brime who... Brime. What is it? What is... What is... What's the requirement to be dyslexic? I see the words for as they are, but, like, I merge them all the time. The bride, comma, whom I didn't even know, apparently designated me to help decorate the reception hall prior to the wedding. I went to do so, and her mother was there, telling me in a hushed, scared whisper that I better not mess anything up because the bride would be furious. Everything, won't, everything was to be a certain way, and it was wrong. And mm, Everything was to be a certain way, and if it was wrong, there would be hell to pay. I gave her the benefit of the doubt, chalked it up to wedding anxiety, and during the reception, I tried to chat with her a bit, and she literally rolled her eyes at me. I also didn't see her look at the groom once at the wedding or the reception. Do these people not be in love? They just get married to be married? Ew. They were split less than a year later. <laughs> later, the groom confided to me and my husband that the morning of the wedding... He'd been filled with an overwhelming feeling of dread and spent several hours just sitting on his lawn thinking, I shouldn't do this. But it was paid for. Tons of guests were waiting. Lots of family, including us, had come in from out of state, and he felt he had to go through with it. Apparently, the bride had a history of being awful and controlling. No clue what made him propose to her in the first place. He knew. See, people be knowing. And once again, if you were people that are, well, maybe awful and controlling doesn't feel good either. Does it hurt you? I'm going to say it does hurt you. So I'm going to tie it back to, you know, the deep segment that we're talking about today. Don't be with somebody that make you feel bad and hurt you. Don't expect them to change and one day be the person you want them to be because it's not going to happen. Or you be at a wedding and have your issues and, and be thinking that you shouldn't do this but doing it just because. And it ends up not working out anyway. You just reach a boiling point that is hard to return from. What percent is my phone on? I thought my phone was on the charger this whole time and it wasn't. The groom's vows. The vows is one sentence. The vows is one sentence. <laughs> Dear bride, we've had our ups and downs, mostly downs. <laughs> I'm fighting. <laughs> Why are y'all getting married? Oh, edit. No, the groom did not call her bride. I just used this as a filler. I realized this made it significantly less funny 
and I'm sorry you're disappointed. Dear, let's see, let's use a name of someone I don't know. Dear Carlington, we've had our ups and downs, mostly downs. What did the audience, what did the family members do after that? There's no awe. They were probably expecting for more to come, but never came. He could have flipped it if it was a mistake, but that clearly was a mistake, and he went with it. And that should tell you right there, that's his true colors right there. Be telling y'all, they be showing their true colors. My cousin, in parentheses, the bride, told us as she was going from table to table thanking the guests that she didn't think it would last. We were stunned. They lasted about a year. Oh, my phone. Why get married then? Can you take your gift back at that point? Would it be rude? Dang. Why get married? Why say yes if you didn't think it was going to last? Why can't people just say what they mean? She probably had that man in there thinking that they were in love, match made in heaven, going along with anything he says. Now he think that, you know, they're one and the same whole time. She don't think it's going to last, and it didn't. What's the point? Because you're going to separate, but now you separate and you got paperwork to separate. That don't make sense. Don't get married if you don't love the person. Simple. If you don't think it's going to work out, you don't get married. If you're having doubts, I mean, I think there's going to be a little bit of doubt. Like, I'm going to spend the rest of my life with this person. But not doubts like, I don't know if we're going to be able to last. Maybe not doubts. Maybe it's just, maybe it ain't doubt. It's just when you hear the rest of my life, that's like, dang, the rest of my life. But that should be the extent of the doubts. If you have other doubts, then... It's probably a reason. It's probably something telling you not to do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. All right. Her vows. They were friends of mine who dated for nearly two years before their wedding. He loved her more than she loved him. Obvious to all, obvious to all our friends. And we suspected she begrudgingly said yet to his proposal. She means yes. He begrudgingly said yes to his proposal. He said his vows first and went on and on about loving her for the rest of his life. During hers, she started with 438 days. That's how long I've loved you. It seemed sweet until she ended her vows with, and I promise to love you for at least 438 more. Most thought nothing of it, and some friends called me a d for saying it was a subconscious sign she wasn't in it for the long haul. She left him exactly that amount of days after the wedding with the note that said, I kept my vow to love you for 438 days more, but I can't for a single day more. He called it. <laughs> People were talking bad about him. They had to say sorry, damn. That's crazy. That really was a sign, though. This is so sad. During the ceremony, when the priest started asking the bride, do you take this man to be your dot, 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 dot? She started laughing uncontrollably and couldn't stop. It was cute for about 10 seconds, and then things got real uncomfortable. They lasted a year and changed. We all kind of knew the only reason they were getting married was because she got pregnant. Don't get married because you, you, someone get pregnant either. That's not okay. I don't understand that. Stop doing that. Just had a baby out of wedlock. Don't be stuck with someone you don't really know like that. You don't really like like that. Someone commented and said, this sounds like a particular flavor of panic attack. I've seen it before where someone who won't let themselves cry bursts out laughing instead. It's kind of disturbing and really sad. Oh, wow. All right, last one. At the rehearsal dinner, the groom's mom is in tears because, quote, he looks miserable, end quote. And he was. We all knew it. During the vows they had written for each other, the bride starts with, I know I can be a pretty terrible person, and I don't know why you stuck around, but that's all going to change starting today. They were divorced a year later. 
I think I was supposed to go over this because this is tying into the message, ain't it? Is it not tying into the message? I know I can be a pretty terrible person. And I don't know why you stuck around. So they, the people that's hurting you don't even know why you stick around. But, you know, it, th maybe they see you as the only person that won't give up on them. That's probably what it is. And they're going to abuse the person, the only person that they had. Sad. You don't know what you had till it's gone. And that's just how it's going to be for them. But I know I've been a terrible person. She knows she's been terrible. But still agreed to get married. Because you stuck around. Oh, I was going to say, she knows she's a terrible person. And she admits to being a terrible person. But that's not going to stop her from continuing to be a terrible person even after being married. So if you was a woman out there, why I sound so country? That's, if you're a woman out there, if you was a woman out there, I like that. If you was a woman out there and somebody is holding a marriage over your head or you see yourself being married to this person, even though they hurt you 50 million times, just know that just because they marry you don't mean they're going to change either. If they're going to want to be a good person, they're just going to be a good person. But clearly, if they know you're not going to give up on them, they're going to keep being a, a bad person. They're going to keep doing you wrong. And that's just how it is. I remember attending a lecture where the speaker said something along the lines of, Women, don't expect marriage to change your boyfriend's habits. It's just a paper paper. Peep of paper? It's just a piece of paper for formality's sake. He's a d now, and that isn't going to change once you're married. So get out while you still can. You know, I was I was kind of conflicted, and, and, you know, I wasn't sure if I wanted to touch on the topic that I touched on today, but clearly this is confirmation that this is a topic I should have touched on, and if you're watching this, it's for you. It has to be. Has to be. No such thing as coincidences. Has to be for you. If he's a d now, that isn't going to change once you're married. It isn't going to change if you keep giving them your trust. It's not going to change if you keep giving them chances over and over again. If you keep giving them 50 11 chances, they're going to hurt you 50 11 times, okay? Get your stuff in order to separate. Show them the consequence of not having you. Show them the consequence of what happens when they hurt you. You don't need them. All right. The next one will be, <clears throat> at what moment did you realize you were dating an idiot? Serious replies only. He decided that he didn't want to poop while staying with me in student halls, so he didn't poop for 10 days and seriously messed up his digestive system. Edit. To clarify, I was living in student halls where were, which were nothing more than bedrooms, bathrooms, and kitchens. It was a half an hour walk away from the university itself. His excuse was that he had anxiety about pooping places he's not familiar with, around a lot of people he didn't know, he did not know at the time, and it was quite near the beginning of our relationship. Ten days of no pooping. If you don't get some poopery, if you don't get some spray, if you don't flush after each time you drop, you know what I'm talking about? Ten days? Ain't nobody worth ten days. You know how hard it is to hold poop in for ten minutes? Ten days? You're crazy. Ten days. Poop we want to come out. I know this is uh, this is nasty, but poop we want to come out. Nah, I'm okay. Someone commented, that's kind of impressive though. I mean, ten days? Dude must have the rectal muscles of Atlas to hold that in without a little bit of slipping out. <laughs> Rectal muscles of Atlas. That's true. Like, you can barely make it upstairs when poop is coming. You know, you, you out in public and the poop is coming and you can't, you don't got a bathroom near. You start sweating. You can't, you can't breathe properly. Like, you got to watch how you breathe. You get squeezed your butt cheeks. Ten days. Heck no, nah, he's crazy. 
She threw a butter knife at a light bulb in a crowded restaurant because she didn't like that it was flickering. That's bigoted. That's like... I don't even know what to say. Like, if I was in that situation, I wouldn't know what to say. I'd just be shocked. Too stunned to speak. Too stunned to speak. Too stunned to speak. She was out for a run one day, and when she came back, she said an animal charged at her. So she cut her run short. I asked her what it looked like, and she said, like a cow, but brown. He said it was a cow. <laughs> She's never seen a brown cow. <laughs> oh my gosh. She thinking about milk cows. Someone commented, that's a chocolate cow. That hmm, that's a chocolate milk cow. The black and white cows turn all black when they're out of milk and slowly get white patches as if they fill back up. And slowly get white patches as they fill back up. When he told me quite seriously about how people with enough willpower can survive by photosynthesis. How do you argue with someone that ridiculous? You can't. You gotta let them have it. If you think that we can survive via sun and turn that into energy and glucose. <laughs> He's insane. You should leave. Well, you should have got up and left and said, all right. And he'll realize that every time you bring it up, people don't want to be around him because that's wild. There really are people that think that they can not eat and get energy from the sun and that be enough. And I think they all withered away. So natural selection. Maybe. <laughs> that's wild, though. He called lingerie linguine, as in the pasta. Hey, baby, you gonna wear that linguine tonight? No. Hey, baby, you gonna wear that linguine for me tonight? Hey, baby, you gonna wear that linguine for me tonight? That is wild. <laughs> that is wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My girl, she was wearing a linguine the other day. And I was like, dang. He was getting his license renewed. And they asked him if he wanted to be an organ donor. He said no. When I asked why, he told me. When I asked why, should be a comma there. He told me it was because he didn't want the government to come knocking for any of his organs when he still needed them. He really thought that becoming an organ donor meant that at any time his organs could be taken. <laughs> Bro. No way. So he think whenever someone needs a heart, they're just going to come to your live body and take your heart to give it to them that's wild what do y'all do when someone says something innocently not stupid i don't want to say stupid what do you do when some people well some people are are actually like they do make stupid comments so we're gonna see we're gonna stick with idiots but an innocent idiot what do you do well i haven't dealt with them before you know you chuckle and you explain it to them and then you laugh some more it's funny all right i asked him about the class he was taking at community college him it's going okay better than last year i failed it twice This is your third time. You should know the material. You should know the test. You should know everything. You should be going great. Splendid. I failed it twice. She said, must be a hard class. What's it about? Him. Learning strategies. <laughs> he 
failed a class about how to learn twice. <laughs> learning strategies that's a that has to be like a lower level class i don't know let me not speak on someone else's subject but <laughs> failing anything in college twice is wild but depending on the the level of you know difficulty then it's understandable someone said he needs strategies to learning wait he needs strategies to learn learning strategies 101 <laughs> boyfriend took me to a fancy restaurant and we ordered wine when the waiter came back he gave my boyfriend the cork to sniff my boyfriend grabbed it sucked on it and licked it like a lollipop all excited while the waiter looked uncomfortable. Poured the glasses and slunk away. <laughs> if a waiter handed me a cork, I wouldn't know what to do with it. I would just look confused and say thank you. Honestly, that's really what I would do. But he sucked it and licked it like a lollipop. Someone said, I can't decide if it's idiosity or comedic genius. It has to be comedy because you, you sucked it and you licked it. People just respond differently than I do. All right. Making Kool-Aid. How much, well, quote, how much sugar does it need? End quote. No, I'm not doing this. How much sugar does it need? It says it on the package. Just tell me. One cup. Okay. There's only a one-third cup here. Where is the whole cup? I don't know. Just use a one-third cup. Well, how many scoops do I do then? It's one third of a cup. I don't know fractions. Just tell me. I'm not going to tell you. Figure it out. It's one third of a cup. How many do you think it would be? I don't know. Averages. Averages. Size. Hat. Logan. Just tell me. I don't know. I don't know what that means. Three. The girl was 20 years old at the time. I'll never forget that. Jesus tap dancing Christ. Okay, that, that has nothing to do with it. But you learn those kind of fractions in elementary school. Everybody should know how to get a cup from one third of a cup. Everybody. One third, two third, three thirds. But to go that long, back and forth, to show me that you are an idiot, I don't know. I would probably, what would I do? I'll probably tell them. I wouldn't put them through all that, though. I'll probably tell them. But I love math so much, like... It doesn't have to do anything. It really doesn't have anything to do anything. But that's wild. To not know how to get a cup from a third of a cup. Super duper wild. It's so wild that I'm like, it's not even funny. It's like sad. Because what kind of education did you get to not know? I feel bad for this person now. I don't know fractions, just tell me. Oh my gosh. All right, so that is all for the Let Loose segment of this podcast. Um, we're going to hop into what we learned this week and our challenge of the week. So what we learned this week, we talk about, obviously, self-explanatory. What we learned this week, what lessons were presented to us in whatever happened during this week and then for the challenge you challenge yourself to do something in this next and up and coming week so i didn't write down what i learned so this is just going to be coming right off the dome maybe i'll keep doing this and maybe i won't because i don't know. this week i learned the hard way how to set a boundary for myself that i never set before and never thought to set 
because it's not a boundary for a person it's a boundary for me so when it comes down to doing certain things I'm always down to do things I'm always down I genuinely want to do things I'm always up for experiences whatever it may be at least when it's in certain parameters but my parameters are vast whatever the boundary that I learned to set is to gauge my availability, I guess you can say. As a mom and a wife, and I have all these things going on, I always have things going on, but I need to stop and think before I say, yes, I can do this. Yes, I can go here. Yes, I can do this. I have to think about all the things that I really have to do because I really don't think about it. I just have uh, blockers because I really just want to, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's a kid in me. I'm going to say it's the kid in me. But the fun overshadows anything I have to do, right? But I didn't realize that the other party is being affected because there are times where I'm not really available, but I said I was, right? Because I'm so used to being busy all the time. I feel like I can just make time for everything where I really can't. But I already told this person I was available, but I'm not. I'm not. But I'm telling myself that I can do all the things. You know what I'm saying? So my boundary for myself would be to think about what I'm about to say. Like, think about all the circumstances and all the people that are being affected. And then to identify if I am for real free or if I'm trying to fit this person in. To know when my free days are actually free days or free days that don't consist of regular work and to be able to say no I'm not available because I always want to be available I always want to be available to the people that are around me that's what it is I always want to be available to the people that are around me without realizing that sometimes my availability isn't availability I'd be blind to my lack of availability because I want to be available that makes sense that's what it is that was my lesson um, to set those boundaries and to know like, hey, I do have a lot going on that day. I'm not available. It sounds very simple, but I don't do it. I just try to fit people in where they can get in because I'm always, my stuff is always jam packed. Right. So yeah. So my challenge is to keep that boundary for myself because then I'm stressing myself out because I am I am trying to make everything fit in a day and that's very exhausting and it's not okay for my mental. Not okay for everyone around me, everyone else's mental either. That's what it is. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope that if this episode was for you that you were watching it and if it was for you, just let me know down below. Um, I appreciate you coming every single week. Um, if you have any suggestions, Anything you want to say, comment below. If you're listening on YouTube, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know when I upload. If you're on Spotify or anything audio, give us five stars. I really appreciate the five stars that we got. Shout out to all five of my subscribers. I appreciate y'all. Y'all the real ones. I hope your next week and going into your weekend is amazing. I hope you have the best time ever. I hope you bring anything that I spoke on here into, you know, your weekend next week, blah, blah, blah. But until next time, y'all be good.